Hey everyone, it's Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and I'm back again working with the wonderful people at Guitar Control to deliver you some more lessons. And this time, in this particular video, we're talking about Dave Gilmore. And I'm gonna show you how to do this lick. So when it comes to Dave Gilmore, there's a few things we need to consider. In terms of our theory, it's not too hard, okay? We're really grounded and rooted within our pentatonics, okay? So the basic groove of this track is a D minor chord like this. Okay, and that just loops around for ages. When you go to the change, the change is down to the C major. And then back to the D. Now, over that, David Gilmour is really common to use pentatonic scales. So, for example, pentatonic box one in D minor. is very much our kind of bass point, but of course he would know the pentatonic boxes all over the neck, which I highly encourage you guys to do. <laughs> so that's just box, you know, box three, box four, box five, box one, box two. You can kind of just put those pentatonics together across the neck. That's what Gilmore would use as a starting point. Now, something I go into in our full David Gilmore player study over at yourguitaracademy.com is how he then layers that up. So something that's really an important part of his playing is layering up, you know, then the full diatonic scale on top of that. being one extra layer on top of the pentatonic. And that brings in our second degree and our flat sixth degree as well. And with those extra notes on the pentatonic scale, you can start to hear more of the kind of darker elements of the Gilmore style playing, right? So just as an example of that, let's just take a, a D minor chord in that kind of fashion. Let's just say that was looping. Now, I'm gonna use these, uh, these cool pedals I've got down here, so I'm gonna use a bit of delay for this now. If I just played with the kind of pentatonic, and all that delay, straight away you can hear that's, that's great. Okay. But if I then added in those extra notes, You can hear that that's bringing in something different, something maybe a little bit darker. Okay, so that's one way that Gilmore kind of shapes his sound. He uses those extra notes, and as well as that, we're using a lot more arpeggio kind of tones as well. So actually using the the kind of minor pentatonic or major, uh, sorry, the minor arpeggio or major arpeggios, all of these elements all go into Dave Gilmore's style of playing. Now we uncover all of those elements in our full player study. Now, what I wanna to talk to you about today is this particular lick. So if I just get my kind of gain on and the delay and everything else, the lick sounds like this. So this lick really highlights some of Gilmore's key sounds. One is little bursts of speed within the pentatonic, um, and two is the kind of unbelievable skill when it comes to bends and vibrato, okay? So let's just deal with that pentatonic burst first. Now I'm just gonna clean this up for a second for the sake of teaching. Um, but we're just using that pentatonic box one. Okay, and the lick sounds like this, is this really slow. So all we're doing is going through that pentatonic box. We're starting with a bend, full tone bend. Little bit of vibrato on top if you can. And then we're gonna come down the pentatonic box. So literally just down the notes of the pentatonic. I like to use a pull off here. Pull off, hit the note. Then there, I'm gonna do a very slight bend before going down the back of that pentatonic shape. Then I'm gonna come back to this pull off 
and then finally end by just doing a full bend on that flat seventh degree going up to my root note. That's why it's so common to, to bend there. Bends up to the root note. So that whole lick in time goes like this. I'll do that again, hang on. One, two, three, four. Now let's just do that a little bit slower for you guys, um, just so you can really keep up with that, so. Okay, notice how there's that lovely vibrato on the top of the bend. Again, three, four. Okay, okay, so let's turn all of that off. So there, there we have it, there, there's the first part. And the first thing you need to do with that is obviously get that under your fingers. It's quite a fiddly little lick, but it's a great one. You can use that all over the place. It's just such a great sound, isn't it? You don't have to end it with the bend. You know, you can then maneuver that into any pentatonic situation you want. Now, the next part of the, of the lick is that real Gilmore. Instantly, it's like, wow, this is Gilmore. Um, and of course, it's this type of bend. So let me just play this for you like this. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a tone bend followed by a two-tone bend, all right? So if I just get rid of the, um, the drive for a second, I'm basically going in layman's terms, I'm going. Or even without that last bit, so. And I'm ending on the, on that root note, okay? But I'm doing all of that within the bend. So I'm bending up. You can see I've got a really solid position for my bends. All three fingers are there. I'm bending up a tone, down a little bit. Don't have to go all the way back down. You can go almost all the way back down. And then I'm gonna go up by two tones, okay? All without picking it again with my right hand. So to go up by two tones, you've gotta really push that bend. So here's what you're looking for. Look how far up I have gone there. It's crazy. Two times you've got to be, you know, you've got to be watching out for that. You've got to, it truly is an ear exercise. You've got to hear as you hit that pitch. And it's this, it's this feeling of going way over the top, which is very Gilmore in its sound. I've gone way over the top there. And it just sounds amazing, okay? And it's that control of the bend. Notice it's all within one pick, right? And even at the end, I'm still getting it ringing out. So for a lot of you guys, it'll end up being kind of like, you know, and we lose, we lose the bend underneath what we're trying to do with the fingers. So it's gonna take some time to get that into your playing, but it's such a key part of Gilmore's sound. It's used all the time that I'd highly recommend trying it out. So you're gonna to have to really push those bends, all right? So let's do it nice and slow with the two bits together. One, two. In fact, I'll just get my delay in time. One, two, three, four. Okay. So just a little bit of advice when it comes to gear as well. You'll notice from the introduction, I'm, you know, I'm using a couple of pedals here. Now it doesn't matter what pedals specifically, but I've got an overdrive pedal to obviously give me that kind of compressed drive sound. So there's definitely very well compressed drive sound. And then I've got quite a hefty delay. Now 
Now, I would never play with that much delay if it was me, but I really want to emulate that kind of classic Gilmore tone, and it is absolutely flooded with delay, and it's a great sound, because it really helps kind of cut through the mix when you do that as well for a big guitar solo. Um, so it's got that epic, you know, kind of sound to it, and apart from that, I'm obviously working through my Kemper amp um, with something like a high watt type preset, but we're, we're not 100% sure because it doesn't say high watt on it, but that's something like Gilmore might use. Um, but really, I'm using the overdrive to really get the gain and get the compression, and I'm using the delay for that epic sound. So have some fun with that, guys. Give it a go. Remember, you can download the materials right here uh, underneath the YouTube video, and I'll see you next time for another video.